Hey, good morning. Happy Saturday. Welcome to the weekend. It's Hobby Evolution episode 176. Uh, it was a freaky Friday. Um, going to get into that. What I want to talk about main topic today. Uh, spoke yesterday morning about possibly going out retail card hunting. I did not for two reasons. And I tell you why, because uh, one of those reasons, the numbers will absolutely astound you. I was getting some reports from uh, from somebody here locally. Um, another reason I didn't was it was kind of a terrible finish to my week. Um, sinus headache knocked me out Thursday. Um, we've had some wacky weather changes here. So Wednesday... It was like I had to run out for an, for an errand. It was seven degrees, super windy, um, and so when it gets really cold and dry, my 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 sinuses just give me fits. Thursday, it didn't last like I had a terrible headache most of the day, but it, it kind of got better um, as the day went on. Well, it got a lot better um, as the day went on, uh, but it was also like. It bounced back to like 40 degrees, snow's melting, um, less windy. And then yesterday it was like frigid again. It was like 10 degrees. Um, so I didn't get very good sleep last night. I'm dealing with another sinus headache this morning. Um, not as bad as, as Thursday. Um, but, um, I'm, I, I just don't, I don't feel a hundred percent right now. Um, but even worse, I woke up. Uh, Friday morning and um, so my wife's in Florida so I'm on doggy duty um, literally and figuratively um, George what's up good morning uh, George is doing some late night uh, sorting by the way um, I will be joining George and Dan tonight on their uh, on their channel, so check that out. George found another thirty Cubs. Nice. I'm I'm always finding Cardinals, so uh, definitely we'll we'll be getting together on another trade soon. Um, so I'm on doggy duty, and so typically, so my dog is like the most passive, like easygoing, um, and my wife sleeps. My wife's in real estate, as I've mentioned. So her hours are like really funky. So most of her business is done like after 5 p.m. Um, so like during the day and after 5 p.m. Um, so she sleeps till like 10, 10, 30 in the morning. She stays up late because she's working on deals sometimes late into the night. So, um, so our dog like has her schedule. Like we'll take the dog out to, to, to go to the bathroom before we go to bed, you know, say nine, 10 o'clock. Good morning, Zach. Take the dog out nine, 10 o'clock and sleeps through the night. And the dog won't get up until my wife gets up at, you know, 10 o'clock, um, goes down, does its, its morning business. So now that it's just me and biscuit, my dog, uh, for another week. Um, so I get up at, you know, like six, Dog doesn't want to get up at six. So dog stays in bed. Yes. Sleeps in our bed. Uh, just a 12 pound hot knees. Um, so I'll take a shower, get dressed. I, I come downstairs and record the, the show. Um, get my coffee brewing, get logged in for work. And between seven 30 and, and seven 45 is when the dog actually jumps out of bed, comes downstairs, goes to the bathroom, and then just kind of chills on the couch the rest of the day. Uh, so I did everything yesterday, you know, like normal dog stayed in bed, nothing like Thursday night, nothing was amiss. Um, she ate her dinner fine, went to the bathroom, um, went to bed. Everything's good. Yes. Morning. I do my normal routine and I'm sitting at my, uh, work computer upstairs and I, I hear this like, like, um, not a bark almost it's, it's like a, not a cry, not a bark, like somewhere in between a cry and a bark. And, and we have a, like every person in our neighborhood has a dog. So I just thought it was, you know, maybe something outside I was hearing. Um, and then I heard it again and I thought, well, I better go check on, on biscuit. And biscuit was like 
at the edge of the bed and, and she always jumps out of bed on her own. So I knew something, something's going on. So she won't jump out of bed. So I pick her up, put her on the floor and she's like holding up her, her paw. So I'm like, Oh man. So she's like limping, like won't put any weight. So I, I carry her downstairs and take, take a look, call my wife, um, look at the paw. So she's got like some really bad, like uh, infection. And she's had this before. Um, she gets these infections on her um, like toenails or whatever. So wife calls the vet, sets up an appointment for me to, to drop her off. Um, and then in the meantime, it was like abscessed. So it started bleeding. There was like blood on her blanket. Um, she's in like super pain, like tail down, like just won't do anything. Can't walk on her own. I, I had to like, I had to take her out, um, like carry her out to the, the patch where she pees. Um, had to bring water to her on the couch. Um, took her to the vet. They identified it's, it's a toenail infection. Um, has some pills to take like a pain pill and a, uh, uh, whatever pill for the, um, the infection. Um, problem is she like, won't eat. Like she is a, a picky eater as it is. Um, and like the only thing, like when she's in, in the, she's not in the mood to eat. The only sh thing she'll eat is cheese. Of course, one of the pills you can't take with dairy. So, uh, try to get her to eat like meat or, or something else. So I was able to get her the pain pill with cheese. Um, uh, and then I had to get creative with dinner so she could take her other pill. Um, and I made, uh, the, the Morton's pot roast from Costco. Awesome. Especially when, um, uh, you're, you know, bacheloring it up for a week. Um, you just throw it in the microwave and the dog loves it. So, uh, the dog and I shared some Morton's pot roast last night. Uh, I was able to, to get the pill in her food. She ate it. She loved it. I had to actually feed her by hand on the couch. She would, not, she would not get up. Uh, she would not eat out of her bowl. I had to hand feed her. My hands are like just gross with pot roast. Um, but she ate, took all her pills. Um, she did improve like last night. So I hung out instead of coming downstairs and playing with my cards. I, you know, hung out with, with biscuit. Uh, we watched the NBA. We watched some SmackDown. Um, and she was able to walk. She like was able to go upstairs on her own, go outside and, and potty on her own. Um, so she's doing a little better, um, today. So, um, vet said she'll be in some pain for the next few days, um, till that those meds kick in and infection goes down. So that was my, fr that was like a lot of my Friday. In the meantime, I'll be, uh, shopping for any cards. I'd love to. I, I really want to find some elite extra edition. Um, and heck they might, might be on the shelf. I don't know if, cause people, I don't know if people are trying to flip those or not. Uh, everybody's after basketball, football, and apparently Pokemon. So, uh, one of the guys we follow each other on Twitter, he's here in the area and he does, um, go out to the stores. So he was giving me some updates and you'll be astounded by some of these numbers. Okay. So, uh, our vendor stocks every Friday here in, in the Madison area. And usually he has the same schedule, but he does mix it up. And he mixed it up a little bit yesterday from his normal routine. So he was actually at the store closest to my house first thing in the morning. Um, it's like five minutes or less from my house. Um, so guy I know sent me a, a message, said... He was in line at 7.40 a.m. at Target before the store opens, 7.40 a.m. He was 23rd in line at 7.40 a.m. before the store even opened. By the time he like got his stuff, I don't know what he was allocated, but uh, by the time he was out of there, there were 30 plus people first thing in the morning, Target number one. So while he's there in line, he overhears somebody that was at uh, another, uh, this is at a Walmart. So 
he had been, this other guy was in line at a 24 hour Walmart in Sun Prairie, which is on the other side of uh, Madison. He got in line at the Sun Prairie Walmart at 3.30 a.m. And he was fourth in line at 3.30 a.m. Um, if those blaster boxes were filled with gold, it would be hard for me to get in line at 3.30 a.m. for a $20 blaster box filled with gold nuggets. Um, the next stop for our target vendor... Uh, was in uh, Fitchburg. Uh, he was 32nd in line at that location. 32nd. So then he went to Hilldale. Uh, Hilldale is Hilldale is the target that I actually uh, blogged about um, where they're doing the text thing. Um, and it's the, the closest target to the university campus, University of Wisconsin. Um, so he got to that store at 11 a.m., um, and this store, so he got there at 11 AM. The vendor will stock this store between two and, and 4 PM. So between three and five hours before the vendor was even going to get there, he got there at 11 AM, 34th, 34th in line, several hours before the vendor would even hit that target. Zach, that is crazy. And guess what? I did not even attempt to go to a Target store yesterday for any cards. Um, I don't know if I need it. If I need something today that I can get at Target, uh, I don't think I do. I'll swing by the one that's just down the road just to see if there's... I really want to open some Elite Extra Edition. I know that you've got to be crazy waiting in line to even have a chance at one blaster of hoops or... Um, football prism. I don't even care about football prism. I really want to open some basketball, but, um, I'm not patient and I'm not going to wait that long. So, uh, I found those numbers to be, uh, pretty obscene. That's crazy. Um, and that's for NBA hoops, which I know is, you know, kind of a cool product and it's still 1920, which the rookie class is pretty awesome. Um, really awesome actually right now. Um, just wait till prism comes out. There's going to be 50 people in line with these numbers. Prism basketball, when, when does that come out? In March, I think. Jeez Louise. It's going to be crazy. Um, and I'm not even like, for like top, like I'm kind of bummed about top series one. Like I've, I, I may have to overspend what I want to spend on a hobby box from one of the on online retailers. Um, because I don't think I'm going to be able to get, and I, and I said this last year, um, that we're going to see in 2021, a run like no other, where people are going to clear the shelves of, of series one in my area. I don't even think you're going to have the opportunity to clear the shelves because they're limiting everything. And I think top series one is going to be one of the things that people are grabbing. Um, if that's the case, maybe I'll overpay for a, a single hobby box and get my rip and, and call it a day. I've got some, I've got some sets from last year that I, I got, I bought three of the green sets, um, from blowout. I opened one. It was the gold star parallel. So I didn't want to open the others. So I've got those. I, I bought an orange set with the, the relic. And then my wife for Christmas, um, one of the things she got me was the purple set. So, um, I may dig into those. I don't like holding sets sealed because I can pull the cubs out. Um, so I may rip into those, uh, for opening day. I've got some of the, the retail stuff I got for black Friday. So maybe like on baseball opening day, I'll just have my own rip party of stuff that I have lying around because I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to get any, uh, 2021 retail. Um, but I guess series one comes out, what series one comes out in like two weeks. So that's, that's two months before the season even starts anyway. So maybe by actual opening day, uh, there will be some, some retail on the shelf because so part of the reason that I do have a little bit of optimism about base series one for baseball is, uh, we had tops update on our shelf shelves at like the target stores, like, like tons of it for weeks. Um, you know, there was the initial run when it first came out just because it's, it's the new shiny thing. Um, but 
it was like stocked like for the next three weeks. And I mean, stocked like a wall of tops update. And that's like, you know, it became the part where it's like, Oh, there's tops update again. Um, where like week one, it's like, Ooh, tops update. I can buy a couple blasters. Um, so yeah, Dan, what's up? Good morning. Um, Dan would like to know what percentage of them were buying to open versus flip. That's, uh, based on my Facebook marketplace, uh, which blows up on Fridays, uh, most of them are looking to flip. Um, and it's kind of funny. I, I saw one this morning was like a single NBA hoops hanger box. The dude was trying to flip on Facebook marketplace. He'll probably sell it. Um, but it's like, you're going through, like, I don't get, like if you can get there and you can get like six, seven, eight which, you know, sometimes if you clear a shelf, you can get a lot, but if you can get five, six, seven, eight boxes, blasters, packs, you can make it worth your while. But to flip one single hanger box where you're spending, it's nine ninety nine plus tax, five and a half percent here. So it's like 11 bucks. What? Well, 10 bucks. So 55, so not even 11 bucks, 10 50. So you're paying 10 50, 11 bucks for a, a hanger box. And you're going to flip it for probably 35. You're probably, you know, you can list it for 40 or 50. You're probably going to settle at 35 for a hanger box of NBA hoops. Um, so you, you've put in a lot of time to wait in line because if you get that, you've, you've likely here now other places are different, but just speaking from my own area, you're going to wait in line for, for quite a while. You're spending a lot of time waiting and then you're going to put it online. Then you're going to have to drive somewhere to meet and it, for, for what, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, not worth it to me. Maybe it's worth it to, to other people. If you get a bunch of stuff, then I, I guess it's worth it, but um, not worth it in, in my mind. Zach says, I can understand how people don't like people like me who entered the hobby during the pandemic. At least I'm interested in being in the hobby long-term. Um, I think it's awesome that people have returned to the hobby. And what's, what's more awesome about Zach's story is that he's doing it with his kid and Porter is loving baseball cards. And I think that's like, just that's super awesome. I don't dislike anybody new to the hobby. There's a lot of hate on the flippers. I don't hate the flippers. I've flipped before. Heck I flipped six months ago when I could get some stuff um, like uh, Chronicles and mosaic basketball. This was before I like started watching basketball again. Um, and I was able to, and th this was limited and I was able to get like one pack, one blaster, one mega. I made good money flipping it. Um, so I, Hey, if, if it's there and, and you can flip, I, you know, personally, selfishly speaking, I hate it because I want it, you know, I want it to either flip or to, to rip. And, and right now I actually want to rip the basketball as opposed to six months ago. I wanted to flip the basketball, um, the baseball. I just want to open. Um, but I get it. Like, Hey, if you have the time, if you have the patience, um, I don't, I don't hate on the flippers. Um, I've been there before. Um, the behavior seems frantic and opportunistic. It does. Um, I will, I will say that I've, I've waited in line a couple times here. Uh, for some stuff. Um, and everybody's been like, been cool in the, in the, you know, limited amount of time that I've spent, um, you know, hanging around the target aisle. Um, everybody's been cool. In fact, I, I shared the story. Um, this, was, I think around, um, when was this? I think this was probably the first week of tops update. Um, because the only thing that was stocked, everybody was going for like Pokemon and there was prob probably 12 of us in line, but this was like a dead period where there was nothing new. I think, I think mosaic was on its end. Mosaic football was on the end and they didn't restock any mosaic football, but they had like some Don Russ football, some rookies and stars football and tops update baseball. Like maybe the second week of it was probably the second tops update restock or third. Cause I remember it was like, all tops update baseball and rookies and stars football. Um, and since I waited a little while in line, not long, like 10 minutes, cause the vendor was stocking when I got there. Um, I bought some rookies and stars just to open and it's, it's a garbage product. Um, but it was fun. I opened it on, on like Sunday watching football. 
Um, but there was a guy in line in front of me that grabbed a couple Donruss football sets, and um, I think they retail at like 40, but you could sell them, you could flip them for like 75, 80, I think. And he like offered it to me. He's like, Hey, I've got two of these. Do you want this one? And I'm like, No, I don't, I don't want that. And he was like asking everybody in line. So there's like, there's good guys out there, and everybody that I've experienced um, has been really cool to deal with. Um, there's no arguments, no fighting, and I know that there are in other places, um, which is unfortunate. Um, but locally here, I haven't, I haven't experienced anything shady, nothing, you know, low underhanded, um, at least in my own personal experience. Uh, Dan asks, when did box flipping start? Um, it's kind of always been around. Uh, and I, th the funny thing you at, I actually box flipped Walmart blaster boxes of Tops flagship in 2006. Um, and that was when the Alex Gordon rookie seeped into the retail format and it wasn't supposed to. And there were variations. They had it cut out. They had, you know, the different variations of the Alex Gordon rookie because he was not yet supposed to be in the flagship product. So this was when this was in 2006, uh, tops blasters were nine 99 and I was selling them on eBay and I still have some of the transactions. I hoard stuff. Okay. Uh, especially like emails. I have an eBay folder that has like all of my eBay transactions from like 2005 to 2010 or something. So I was like, one day I was bored and I was looking through some of my eBay transactions. Um, and I was flipping the 2006 tops blasters. Uh, I was buying them for $10. That's what the retail price was. And they were selling for between 30 and $40, but also take in mind, eBay fees were a little less in, you know, 15 years ago. Um, and shipping was a lot less like now to ship a blaster box safely. It's probably going to run you five to six bucks. Um, and, and now they have regional formats. So it's, it, it kind of depends if I'm shipping to California, it's going to be 50 cents more than if I ship to, um, Zach in Southern Wisconsin, um, my own region. Um, so box flipping has been around for, for a while. Um, cause I was doing that with, with flagship in, in 2006. Now it wasn't in 2006 and in 2010, it wasn't to this level. Um, but it has existed in some circumstances. Um, I returned to the hobby like full-time hardcore in 2014. Um, I kind of dabbled in 2012. So 2012, 2013, kind of dipping my toes in the pool. 2014 is when I just went in full bore. Um, and I remember in like 2015 or 2016, um, when Tops Fire, when they started releasing some of the retail only formats, Tops Fire, Gallery, Bowman Platinum. There was a run on those on those products. Um, you know, in 2016 or 17, I was hitting up multiple WalMarts looking for Bowman Platinum, and you know, I think the retail was like 30 bucks, 40 bucks on on one of the boxes, and you could flip them for for 80 to 100. Um, so that was in like 2016, 2017. There was always a run on some of those limited uh, limited products. Um, Bowman Platinum had a run for a couple of years. Uh, then the Bowman, uh, uh, mega boxes came out in 2016, I think maybe 2015. And, and those have always been, um, hard to get. In fact, with the Bowman Chrome mega boxes, um, there was a couple of years. I did not find any in my local stores. Um, so we're talking, you know, 2017 for sure. And I think in 2018, um, or maybe 16, 17. Um, I had a couple of people on Twitter actually buy me. They found some in the wild, two different people um, found some in the wild for me and, and just uh, charged me um, retail plus shipping. Um, that was in, I think 18, I had the blog. I think it was my first year of the, the project. Um, so yeah, box flipping is, has been around, but not to this extent. Um, George wants to open some series one, but I don't think I will just, yeah. Um, I, it's like 120 bucks. I haven't been watching it daily, but, uh, following Herman and, and Brad, they kind of provide updates on their, on their podcasts. Um, 
and uh, Herman's got to build two sets and it's, yeah, it's 120 bucks for a hobby box of, of tops flagship. I just, even with the rookie class, I just, I just don't want to do it. I'm going to hold out. Um, I think what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until release week. And if I can't get any retail, um, I'm just going to suck it up and, and buy hobby. And, you know, I think I'll go to 125. If it's more than 125 after release, I'm going to uh, just give up on it um, because I think I will find it. They're going to produce so much of it. It'll be around. It'll be it'll be sought after, but it'll be around. And I have faith that, you know, maybe I won't get any on the first stock the week of. But I always I, I, I get jealous of other people ripping and I want to rip um, because it's that first set of the year. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to just kind of play it as it goes. Um, George, I was considered, uh, saving and buying a case last year, but the craziness ended that. Yeah. I, part of the reason I stopped buying cases was the, uh, extreme increase in prices and the, in, the extreme increase in prices isn't a form of the resurgence in the hobby of 2020. These crazy hobby prices started in 2018. Um, Aaron judge mania is what created the crazy hobby prices. And that's what led to uh, people going to retail. Like it's, it's, it became hard to find Bowman uh, Bowman base in retail because there was such an absurdity between retail pricing and hobby pricing. Um, you know, and I've compared, you know, you can buy a, a hobby box for what, 300 bucks, or you can buy, you know, 14 blaster boxes and have about the same look. Yeah. You're not going to hit the, the Chrome flavor of the minute uh, auto. Um, but you're going to pull a couple autos and you're probably going to beat the odds on some other stuff that you would pull from a hobby box. And you're going to get a lot more cards. And some of that value is in the base. Um, first Bowman Chrome. Some of the prices on that have, have, have gone up and I need to look through my stock and get, prepared uh for what i have uh because i've i bought a ton of bowman um in the last few years um dan misses summer shandy um dan i love summer Sh summer shandy when it comes out here in the midwest um and i think they're national now line and kugels um is that like that's like the first sign of of baseball season and summer like uh five o'clock like being light at five o'clock uh temperatures are starting to warm up uh you see your first robin the bird um and summer shandy those are like the signs of spring robins uh more light and and summer shandy from line and kugels the first signs of spring uh george asked a great question i've i've been seeing reports on heritage high number that the hanger boxes Hanger the the nine ninety nine hanger boxes are over twenty dollars at Walmart, and that's I think yes, George. I think that's the sign to come. Um, yeah, and Herman mentions it there twenty one ninety eight for hanger boxes of of Heritage High Number. And we saw that with Bowman Platinum in Walmart. I don't know if that's going to be a Walmart thing because that's the only place I've seen uh, the increase in retail pricing has been at Walmart. So I'm not sure if that's like a Walmart thing. I don't know. Is Heritage High Number even in Target? I didn't think after it was released and it, a couple of weeks went by, I didn't see any um, uh, any uh, talk of Heritage High Number in Target. I just started seeing some reports this week of Heritage High Number being found in Walmart and then the pricing. And a lot of people are just grabbing. I would. Um, I, I, I don't look at the prices because I know a blaster is 20 bucks. I know a hanger box is, is 10 bucks. Um, I know a mega box is probably going to be 40, 50, 60, depending on, you know, what, what product it is. So I wouldn't look at the price tag. I just grab, you know, Hey, I want to rip some heritage high number. I'm going to grab three hanger boxes. Holy crap. It's 70 bucks. Um, but I think that's, I think we're going to see that it'll be interesting in two weeks when series one comes out. Are we going to see an increase in, in, in retail 
across the board at Target and Walmart. I think that's going to be very. I'm um, I'm more. I think I'm interested. Ugh, I think I'm more interested in seeing that this year um, with series one than I am the checklist. I'm, I'm really interested in seeing what rookies made the series one checklist, but more so uh, is the retail pricing going to be higher than what we've seen in past years. And I think it should be because it's been 20 bucks. Blasters have been 20 bucks for about 10 years. I think when I came back in and was buying blasters again in uh, 2012, I think they were, they were 20 bucks in 2012. Um, so at least eight, nine years, uh, for that night, 1999 price tag. Um, Dan says goose Island have been brewing here in Korea now. Oh, nice. Three, one, two is one of my favorite beers. And I was bummed, uh, when the Ricketts bought like all of Wrigleyville, uh, goose Island had, uh, that brew pub right across the street from, from Wrigley. Um, I loved, I loved Goose Island. And, uh, in fact, it was a, gr their patio, uh, in Wrigleyville was a great place to listen to Wrigley field concerts. Um, instead of, you know, Dave Matthews band was there and gosh, this was like 2010. Um, Dave Matthews was there and I think ticket prices were a hundred bucks. So we just hung out at, at Goose Island, um, and sat on the patio and listened to the concert from the, from the patio. It was awesome. Um, and now it's, I think it's a Cubs team store in that, that area. It's, um, I haven't been to Wrigleyville and, um, didn't obviously go in 2020, 2019. So I don't know what type of, of progress on that block. Um, because it's, if you haven't been to Wrigleyville in a couple of years, uh, holy cow, I couldn't believe the change from 2016 to 2017. I had gone, unfortunately I didn't go to any playoff games, uh, but I was there, um, I was there for a Pearl Jam concert in August of 2016, and then I went to uh, one of the last regular season games in September, um, and then I wasn't back again until uh, June of 2017 for my bachelor party, and we pull up, we, we actually took a limo for my buddies, my buddy, my best man lives out in the Crystal Lake area, so he, uh, so we hung out at his place. Uh, had some beers and then he got a limo to take us down to Wrigleyville. And so the limo drops us off at, you know, whatever point. And we come walking down, uh, where'd we walk down? Was it Addison? I think it was no Clark. Maybe, uh, we come walking down and I like, I was so discombobulated. I didn't know where I was not from the beer, but from all of the new buildings, uh, that had just magically appeared in the prior eight, nine months, it was absolutely crazy. So it's, it's been over a year since I've been down there. Um, so, um, I'm just, I'm itching to get out. So maybe when spring springs, um, I'll just take a drive, whether or not I can like get out and, and I guess I can walk around, but if anything's going to be open by then, who knows? Um, just going to check up on the chat here. Goose Island got me off on a tangent. Uh, the hanger boxes have three packs inside and not a brick like they used to have is what I heard. Okay. So if that's the case, I like that regardless if there's more or less cards, but I rather have packs than the bricks. I hate those bricks. Um, and, and it takes away all of like, at least packs you have like, Ooh, here's pack one, nothing in there. Maybe there's something in pack two, but a brick is just one pack. Um, and then all of the fun is gone quickly. Zach says a sign of spring is seeing trash and litter alongside the highway when the snow melts. Uh, tell me in all the rocks that are in the ditches from the, the snow plows love. Yeah. Gotta love it in the upper Midwest. Uh, they originally said high number wasn't retail. And that's what I thought. And then all of a sudden it pops up in Walmart. So maybe it's just a Walmart thing. I, I have no idea. Um, Dan says I'm a Sox fan. Honestly, don't enjoy watching baseball. Would rather play. Um, speaking of MLB live, I discovered that I have a, and I, I saw Herman mention this yesterday, I think about, uh, Herman had the, uh, trial of the hockey pass. Um, and I apparently have a, a trial of NBA league pass 
and I'm like flipping through games and I have YouTube TV, which I cannot recommend enough. It's so awesome. It's so easy to use. Everything is there. There's no like switching HDMI's like our upstairs TV, um, kind of an older smart TV. So we had like, we had to use two remotes. We had to switch HDMI's if we wanted to watch like Netflix and, and all that stuff. Um, my downstairs, uh, TV was a little more advanced, so I could use the one remote, but now with YouTube TV, it's just all, all in one. And I'm flipping back and forth between games. I was watching, uh, Lugu Dort from the thunder. His prices are crazy. Um, so I wanted to watch him play. So I'm flipping back between the thunder game and another game. And it's almost, almost to the point where it's like, what subscription can I cancel to uh, get NBA league pass? Um, because it's a lot of fun, but I know that as baseball begins, the NBA is just going to kind of be a secondary to me. So um, I'm going to try to hold out and not uh, subscribe. I'll take advantage of the, the free trial. And uh, in, in once baseball starts, then, you know, I'll get the MLB package. Um and I definitely don't want both of those paying for both uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, Dad's high school, a few blocks from Comiskey. Dad was a diehard Sox fan. Got to see him in 05. That was a great, that was a great White Sox team in 05, especially in the playoffs. They made an amazing run. Um. The National in Chicago, man. I hope it sounds like there was some really great news out of Illinois. So here's my thoughts on the National. Um, up until recently, I didn't think it was going to happen um, in Chicago, not because of you know the National, but because Illinois has like the toughest restrictions in the entire nation regarding COVID and gatherings, and like I mean Illinois, like. Illinois is one of like maybe 10 states not playing high school sports. Like they are one of very few states. They are super strict. That's why I, I'm still, um, I'm not very optimistic that the national is going to happen. If it does, and I'm starting to feel a little better that it will happen in some capacity um, in Rosemont, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be a lot different. I think it's going to be scaled back. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a little more intimate um, than than what we, especially from what we saw. In can you imagine if if there were no um, in a lot of the the resurgence in the hobby is because of the pandemic. But just imagine if you could just snap your fingers. COVID vaccine works. This summer we're going to have a full scale national in Chicago. In 2019, the national was crazy, and in a lot of it was my first. But a lot of people there that have been to that were there in the nationals in the early nineties with the, the hobby boom of, you know, the junk wax era said that this was the busiest they've seen it since like 91, 92. Can you imagine now how crazy it would be? Um, you know, after this resurgence in the hobby, but I don't think we're going to get there this year. Um, there's still, you know, still a lot of unknowns. Um, but with the state yesterday, um, they did say high school sports. Um, they have like phases and tiers um, for what you can do as far as bars, restaurants, uh, capacity gatherings, um, and playing high school sports. Um, and I worked in in broadcasting and worked in in high school broadcast high school sports broadcasting. So um, you know I follow this pretty closely just because of friends that our coaches and broadcasters. Um, so it's just, it's just kind of in front of me all, all the time. Um, so they released, you know, they pulled back some restrictions, um, because a lot of the regions in Illinois are now, um, uh, improved as far as like the COVID numbers. Um, so I think most regions are allowed to, to start participating in high school sports. Um, so that, that gives me optimism that, we'll see some type of, of national in Chicago in 2021, but we're at the end of January nationals end of July, still a lot of time. Um, but it's, it's going to be interesting to, to see how this vaccine develops and how the state of Illinois 
Um, does it because the state of Illinois, like they shut down the big Chicago show. They have two Chicago shows in Rosemont where the national is held in March and November. The March show last year was canceled, like at the 11th hour, like, you know, and I have a couple of friends that were, were vendors that were setting up. They were in, in town, like from Cleveland and St. Louis, they were already, you know, getting prepared to set up at the show and canceled like five, 4 PM. Uh, the day before they were supposed to set up. Um, so, yeah. So I really hope there's going to be a national this year. Really, really hope. Um, just going to catch up here on the chat. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Dan, uh, Dan is Korean cardboard here in the chat and him and George KBO collections will be uh, live tonight, 7 PM central. I'll be hanging out with them. So, uh, tune into that 7 p.m. tonight, Central Time. It'll be Sunday morning for them, and it's late night for them right now. Um, Zach, that comment is spot on. I totally 100% agree. The next decade, this decade, is going to replicate the Roaring Twenties. You are 100% right. Uh, the 2020s will be very similar to the 1920s because what happened in in the in the 20th century in the 19 teens we had world war 1 we had the flu pandemic in like 1918 um and right now we're in the middle of a pandemic and uh everybody's itching like i can't wait to go like I'm making plans with okay I'm going to go see Steve and in, in Greeny out in Cleveland. Um I want to meet up with Zach and Porter for a White Sox Cubs game. Um I want to go see Mike Summer down in Bloomington. I want to meet all you guys at the National in Rosemont. I'm just making all of these plans. It's going to be insane. And I think we're all so sheltered um that we can't wait to get out and it's going to be crazy. The the 20s will be the roaring 20s. Uh, I 100% agree with that. Um, Zach says the national normally in the summer, I think most things will get pushed to fall. So that's, that's the tricky thing. Yes. The, the national and these contracts are signed like years in advance for these large venues. Um, so they cannot push, um, a show like the national. Um, I know they did. Well, they tried to last year. So I, I guess I can't say they can't because they can, they attempted to last year in 2020, they tried to push it out. It was supposed to be in Atlantic city, July of 2020. They rescheduled it for December. Um, uh, but obviously we were still in the middle of the pandemic, so it can happen. Um, I think it's, it's kind of rare and I don't know, you know, I, I'm not privy to like the, the individual, it, it's all going to be based on like the individual contract between the national, um, corporation or whatever they are it's the contract between the national and the venue so um is there you know a clause where they can reschedule what's rosemont's schedule like um do they have any open dates so it gets really tricky um and with the national i've heard that um they have there's so few locations that they can actually have because there's a lot of criteria that goes into the host location. Um, it, it's, it's venue parking, um, hotels, like so much goes into it that it, it really limits the amount of cities and locations that they can actually hold the national. So it, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, typically, yeah, it's, it's scheduled for the end of July. Um, but yeah, with, with the state of Illinois, I'm, I'm not too optimistic, I'm still 50, 50, but I'm starting, you know, if, if things continue to progress with the vaccine and with COVID, I'm more optimistic. I'm still 50, 50, but I'm starting to teeter on the optimism side, the, the glass half full side of that, uh, 50, 50 prediction. So, um, so we'll see how the next couple months go. Um, and I think fortunately it's, it's one of those situations where, Hey, everything's scheduled. Um, now it's a wait and see. So we have the dates for the national. I'm not sure the exact dates, but it's end of July. Um, so, you know, we have a few months, you know, contingency plan is, Hey, 
Uh, it's either going to happen this week or it's not. Um, we have several months to, to figure it out um, and see how things progress with, with everything. So uh, Dan, hopefully you do um, are able to make it out. Hopefully we have it. You can, you can travel. Um, things better be <laughs> ready to roll by the end of summer. I agree. Uh, Herman got to ride to Loganville with my wife today. Got to hit up Joe Davis and Jaden J sports cards. Nice. I, uh, there's a, there's a shop that I want to visit. Um, I was actually planning while my wife is out, um, was going to drive down cause it's about an hour away. So I can do a quick, a quick jaunt. Um, but I'll probably just wait a couple weeks. There's a, there's a shop about an hour from me that has, um, they set up dollar boxes and quarter boxes at the big card shows in Chicago. Um, and I asked them at the last show I was at, do you have these at your shop? And they do. Um, and I found some awesome cards. Like I, I'll pull piles of, of like colored Bowman chromes and, and autos for a dollar 25 and, and all this for like super cheap, like um, a lot of colored parallels for like a quarter of Cubs and, and uh their dollar boxes are, are cool so i really want to dig through and spend a couple hours digging through so that's that's on my like uh short-term agenda uh, is to to get down there so zach's gonna head out um i'm gonna head out as well went really long today but thanks for the great chat um 7 p.m central time tonight uh i'll be with uh korean cardboard um and kbo collections so check that out 7 p.m central uh, tonight on their YouTube channel, uh, my website, 1 million cubs.com eBay store, uh, loaded up some auctions last night, um, some basketball singles. Uh, so check those out. Uh, 99 cent cards.com links also at the top of the 1 million cubs.com website. So, Hey, thanks for tuning in and have a great Saturday.